In this video, a shocking innovation from Japan is destroying proteinuria. Research says this rice is better than dialysis. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and what I want to share with you today is the biggest innovation in the world of medicinal foods I have ever witnessed. In fact, this is the first time I actually see a food item that is supposed to stop kidney disease progression. I mean, think about this for a moment. You eat this rice and you don't lose kidney function anymore. How awesome will that be? And most importantly, is this even possible? Well, in today's video, we will find out. Today, I want to share with you the incredible findings of a breakthrough study that's coming directly from Japan. And it's all about rice, but not just regular rice. This is a very special type of low protein ginmai or brown rice that has been used to save diabetic kidney disease patients from dialysis. And if you don't think this is incredible enough, well, here comes the best part. This dietary staple can reduce protein intake without any dietary restriction. And do you know what happens when you reduce your protein intake low enough? Well, for the diabetic patients in this study, the difference was huge. As soon as they reduce their protein intake below 0.6 grams per kilogram body weight, which is considered a low protein diet, they were able to completely destroy proteinuria, which means that their kidney function stopped declining and in some cases improved, all thanks to this rice. Now guys, this is an incredible find and not just for, you know, people from Japan with diabetes and proteinuria. Actually, anyone with kidney disease can benefit from the results of this study. In fact, this approach could be even more important for CKD patients in the advanced stages that do not have diabetes. We will see why that in a moment. But before that, let's see exactly what this low-protein Genmai from Japan is. So at the base of this amazing innovation is Genmai, which is just what they call brown rice in Japan. And don't get me wrong, all brown rice is super healthy. Brown rice is something I recommend to all my patients, those with diabetes included. In fact, it retains its bran layer, unlike polished white rice, which makes it a uh, whole grain packed with fiber, vitamins, and antioxidants. An amazing food for diabetes and kidney disease in general. But Genmai is a little different from the regular brown rice you know. In fact, this is a brown rice variety of Japonica quality, which is short grain, sticky and softer compared to the rice most people use in Western countries. And while from a nutritional standpoint, Genmai is not very different from regular brown rice, the low protein Genmai they used in this study was processed and fermented, giving it some huge benefits for gut health as well. Never underestimate this benefit. In fact, renal dysbiosis or the imbalance in the gut microbiota that most CKD patients face is a huge driver of inflammation in the body linked to increased toxin production and ultimately kidney damage. So yeah, if you ever see me trying to convince you to give up pizza and hamburgers for whole grains and fruit, well, that's one of the reasons your gut health and the researchers that are studying low protein genmai have gone on record to say that eating this fermented rice every day is even better than probiotic supplements in fact while it's clear that probiotic supplements do work to improve gut health their efficacy stops when the patient stops taking the supplement but with food it's different you are not supposed to stop eating food are you so, 
This is what we are talking about today, one of the most innovative medical foods in the world of kidney disease, a rice that is not just a probiotic source, but it's also whole grain and most importantly, protein free. And yes, this is exactly how you can save CKD patients from dialysis. So now you may ask, but Catherine, I've been eating brown rice and taking probiotics for a while now. Why is my proteinuria still the same? Well, according to the study we are examining today and according to my experience as well, your problem may be just too high protein intake. Let me explain. Too high protein intake is a well-known issue for CKD patients that are following a renal diet. Now, I'm not talking about patients that are willingly still eating meat here. If you are one of them, well, just go eat the salad, Dave. Today, I'm talking about those patients that are following a low-protein plant-based diet and that are still not improving their GFR and protein real levels. There are various studies that are trying to address this issue and their conclusion is clear. CKD patients on a low-protein plant-based diet have huge problems reducing their protein intake low enough to meet their goal of reducing proteinuria and improving kidney function. Guys, science is extremely clear on this. CKD patients can improve their kidney function in all the stages as long as the cause of their kidney damage is stopped and as long as they are following a proper low-protein diet. But... There's no improving if you eat too much protein, all right? However, getting every single patient to follow a low protein diet correctly, even in a trial, is still considered today a figment of the imagination. Yeah, this is a scientific definition, as you may clearly see. And it's also a huge problem because, you see, patients that eat too much protein all tend to have the same issue. They end up in dialysis. And trust me when I tell you this, in Japan, they hate it when you end up in dialysis. Now, not everywhere in the world things work like that. In the US, ending up in dialysis is something they even encourage. But not in Japan. Research from Japan is usually funded by the government and they are extremely eager to find a way to prevent CKD patients from ending up in dialysis. This is because, as this study clearly outlines, Japan government is sick and tired of paying for dialysis and it costs them a whooping 5 million yen per person per year. That's about 30,000 US dollars, by the way. And you know what? In Japan, they will be gladly spending that money to fund research to get these patients to avoid dialysis instead. Now, of course, if you don't live in Japan, your nephrologist may be sobbing into their stack of denied insurance claims and your government may or may not give a f if you end up in dialysis since you are the one who is going to pay for that. So yeah, guys, this is why we need to look at places like Japan or even Italy if we want to find a way to, you know, get more CKD patients to avoid dialysis. In short, Japanese researchers seem to have found a way to prevent CKD patients from ending up in dialysis and it involves getting the patient to actually follow a low-protein diet. This can be done replacing normal rice with low-protein fermented brown rice or genmai. So, what makes this low-protein genmai so amazing, you ask? This rice basically solves the two main issues of a low-protein diet. First, adherence. Second, caloric intake. Let's talk about adherence because it is way more important than you may realize. If you don't believe me, let me ask you something. Have you ever tried getting someone to follow a renal diet? Because let me tell you, it's an experience. You see, one of the greatest joys in my line of work is get yelled at by a patient for 20 straight minutes about food you know, for trying to save their actual life. What do you mean? I can't eat bacon and hamburgers anymore? Did we lose a war or something? And then there is the other type of patient, the ones who nod, smile, and pretend they're totally on board. Oh, absolutely, doctor. I'll go home right now and throw out every single animal product from my fridge. 
I swear, on my grandmother's grave. Fast forward to their next checkup. Their fridge, still a crime scene filled with processed meat. And their blood work, a dumpster fire. Now, the magic of low protein rice is that it removes the decision making from the equation. See, in Japan, people already eat tons of rice every day. It's like oxygen, it's just there. So instead of forcing them into a full blown lifestyle revolution, they just swap regular rice for low protein genmai. Boom! Protein intake drops, protein urea vanishes. Now, second issue here caloric intake is even more serious. The renal diet is all about restricting protein intake without restricting caloric intake too much. Now, this is a bigger issue than most people realize. When I consult a patient about their diet, I must go to great lengths to explain how to get enough calories every day after removing all the junk food and all the animal products. Because yeah, despite what the keto carnivore folks say, animal-based foods do contain calories. They actually have lots of calories. So think about this for a moment. You remove all the cheese, eggs, dairy, fish, and meat from your diet, and you replace it with fruit and veggies. Now, in the mind of a carnivore influencer, this will make you gain weight because fruits have sugar but most importantly nothing sweet in the morning sweet taste in the morning have for example an omelet and then have an apple but a whole apple because when you transform a piece of fruit then a lot of problems start happening oh no a strawberry my insulin resistance someone call 911 but in reality the exact opposite is true. Since fruit and veggies are way less caloric dense than animal-based foods, when people are started on a renal diet, they start to lose weight. Yeah, I've seen this happen countless times. And don't get me wrong, losing weight is great if you are in stage 3 CKD and you are overweight. But it's a serious problem if you are in stage 5 CKD and your nutritional status is not amazing to begin with, alright? But yeah. Go tell that to a carnivore influencer and they will be like By the way, guys, I know that some of you don't like it when I make fun of keto and carnivore influencers but I just had to see another new patient that ended up in dialysis just because they were talked into a keto diet by some influencer. Anyway, my point here is that you shouldn't be scared of rice or fruit even if you have diabetes. And most importantly, not every single CKD patient needs to lose weight. In particular, stage 5 patients usually do not need to lose weight at all. But we still need to start them on a low protein diet if their goal is avoiding dialysis as long as possible and yeah this rice low protein genmai will be absolutely ideal for this kind of patient this rice is very low in protein potassium and phosphorus which means that the patient can literally eat it every day at all meals if they want and get enough calories to improve their nutritional status but without the added protein. In fact, low protein genmai retains more than 60% of the calories of regular brown rice but it has basically no protein, basically no potassium and basically no phosphorus. It's the best friend of the renal dietitian. And yes, it can make your life easier too. So yeah, in short, this special rice really works and the way it helps patients is by providing them enough calories but without protein and without giving up one of the main staples of their cuisine. Now the bad news. Unfortunately, finding this special low protein rice is not going to be easy. It's only sold in Japan and I still haven't found anyone exporting it. Yeah, I know, what a bummer. However. As I was saying, what really matters is what the study about this rice is proving. That CKD patients on a low protein diet can improve if they replace normal foods with low protein food staples. So now you may ask, I'm not in Japan, how do I find low protein food staples? Well, Japan is not the only country in the world that adopted the low protein diet for kidney disease decades ago. In Italy, we also use low protein foods as a staple of the renal diet. But we don't really eat that much rice here. In Italy, we eat pasta. 
There are at least three brands that produce low protein or protein free pasta and some of them export these products. Low protein pasta is a zero or very low protein alternative to pasta that tastes as good as regular pasta. And since low protein pasta is especially developed for people with kidney problems, it is also very low in potassium and phosphorus. Actually, some brands also fortify this pasta with renal vitamins. Talking about brands, this pasta is pretty easy to find here in Italy. This is Amazon.it. You can find almost any type of low protein pasta here, but you can also find low protein cookies, bread, and more. They ship to Europe, so if you are anywhere in Europe, you shall have no problems. It may be trickier if you live in places where low protein diets were not the norm for people with kidney problems. However, there is a brand called Aproten that is available on some websites in the US, Canada, and Australia. Another brand is called Flavis. This one actually ships only in the US. This brand is called Low Profin and ships in Australia and New Zealand. And guys, I've also found an importer of this brand that can ship to the US, UK, Canada, Germany, and more. Their website is called cambroke.com and I am in no way or shape affiliated to them, but this website has several types of a protect pasta in stock. And while it's expensive as heck, it's still better than dialysis. So if you've ever bought from them, let me know how your experience was. Now, a very important question you may have, what if I cannot find these products or they are too expensive for me? Or maybe I don't like pasta? Guys, even if you don't have access to these low protein food staples, don't worry. Remember that what really matters here is reducing protein intake and improving gut health. And this can also be done by focusing on low protein staple foods you can actually buy at the grocery store. Some staple foods with very low protein content that are suitable for someone with kidney disease are... All fruits, except dried fruits. Fruits are rich in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and can help lower blood pressure and inflammation. Apples, bananas, berries, grapes, melons, oranges, pears, they are all very low in protein, and most vegetables except peas, beans, and corn. These vegetables are also high in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and can help prevent constipation and lower blood pressure. And they are low on protein and safe for a renal diet. But of course, we would still have the problem of getting enough calories. How do we add calories without adding protein? With high fat foods. If you are losing weight and you don't need to, Add fats. Super healthy fat sources include olive oil, flaxseed oil, but also olives, avocados, coconut. These are all super low in protein and full of calories. Great to prevent weight loss. Now guys, if you want to see how to combine these foods to make them even better for your kidneys, my video appears for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye.